Hey guys, it's Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about greenhouses and what to expect and what you're gonna need. Um, we're gonna go all over the specifications of my greenhouse and pretty much everything that went into this whole process. Uh, the first thing I wanna mention is that if you're gonna live in a cold climate, you're gonna need a heater. Uh, this thing does not insulate well. Greenhouses in general do not insulate well and they do not have a heat source. So you need to find yourself, one, a heat source, and you need to be insulating your greenhouse quite well. My heat source is called the New Air Portable Ceramic Heater Quiet Heat Number 15. And uh, this is a product that I'm partnering up with New Air. But I have to say that this is an incredible piece of machinery. This thing, I'm telling you, is beautiful, but it works phenomenal. Uh, we had this thing in our house. Um, for quite some time. I mean, they sent this product to me about a month ago, and I've had it in the house because it's been so cold. Now that we're in mid-December, we didn't have the heat on for quite some time. This little heater, guys, would heat the entire room <laughs> to a crazy degree. I mean, this heater is unbelievable. Uh, it puts out really nice heat, too. So the heat in this thing is not your typical dry heat that comes out of these heaters. In fact, when it comes to plants, when I've had heaters in here in the past, I would hang the heater up here on the corner, if you guys remember, on this hook. And by hanging it up on the corner, uh, anything that was in this vicinity, because it would shoot out this way, would just get blasted with dry heat. And most of the winter, if that heater was running and blasting those plants, that dry heat would dry out the wood and in most cases kill the trees. Um, I've lost quite a few trees because of the heater in my greenhouse. And I've noticed this heater does not dehumidify the air. It puts out a really nice blast of heat that's actually quite comfortable. So if you're not gonna use this for your greenhouse, I suggest using it for your house. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, I'm, you know, partnering up with a company is not something I normally do. Uh, but getting this heater and seeing just how great it was, I'm completely blown away. And even though I'm, you know, selling this product to you guys, I can't believe how good this heater is. Uh, I can fully endorse it, really. Um, so the reason why you need a heater, and like I said in the beginning, is that if you live in a colder place, this greenhouse doesn't do anything. Um, it's only about four degrees warmer than it is outside. So if it's zero degrees outside, it's only four degrees in the greenhouse. That's, that's nothing. So you need a heat source, right? And a lot of people, what they'll do is if they're not gonna use a heater, they're gonna put other thermal mass materials in this greenhouse, like barrels of water, stone. Um, you know, there's many different things you can do on the outside of the greenhouse, but they also need to, need to uh, insulate it. And this is exactly what I've done. And we're gonna, we're gonna get to this at some point here, but you can see I've got a tarp. And this tarp, it's gonna go right over the top of the greenhouse. And it basically goes over the top, comes out the other side, and hooks into these nails here that I have in the wood. Because not only did I need to insulate this, add a heat source, like a heater here, but I also needed to beef this whole thing up. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight greenhouse that's six by eight. It's not very big. I can't fit barrels of water in here. I can barely fit half of my fig trees in this greenhouse. So if I am, you know, going to be putting subtropical species in here that need to stay above 20 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to have a heat source and it would certainly make things more efficient if you had some kind of insulated material like this tarp because the heat rises, right? It's gonna go all the way up to the top and it's gonna be released from these panels that have really let out quite a bit of air, right? There's a lot of holes in this greenhouse. The design of this greenhouse is really not meant to keep in air. <laughs> you know, there's windows at the top that will easily pop up, but adding something on the top, like bubble wrap, it's a lot of, that's what a lot of people do. Blankets, you know, moving blankets. You can even put down row cover, tarps, uh, you know, anything you can do to insulate this because my greenhouse doesn't need sunlight in the wintertime. It's too cold to grow anything in here. And well, all these fig trees are dormant and I wanna keep them dormant. 
So in actuality, less heat is better. And you want to keep this thing somewhere between 20 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. And by adding that insulated material, keeping this heater, you know, at a nice steady rate when temperatures start to dip below 20 is going to be the key to my success. One other thing I want to mention about this heater is that what separates it apart from other heaters that I've had in, in, a, in a greenhouse setting anyway, is that it has a remote which is really nice to not have to come all the way out here and fiddle with this thing. You can use the remote from uh, a couple feet away and then that way I can basically program this the way that I want. And the beautiful part about it is that you can set up, if I turn it on here, it's 33 degrees according to the internal thermometer here. And then I can set up the amount of hours I want this thing to go on for. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's pretty tough to see how, see how that says two, three, four. So I can set this up. I'll come out here at nighttime and I'll be like, okay, it's going to be cold for about eight hours until I wake up the next morning. This thing will automatically shut off for me. I don't have to come out here twice. It's more efficient. It's saving me money. And then if you go over here, you can also set the temperature 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can keep the greenhouse that this thing will only kick on if it's below 50. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing here, um, really efficient. To go into more details about the greenhouse, again, Harbor Freight, I think the thing cost me somewhere around $350 in total, you know, from the wood here, all the screws and different things we had to get to beef this thing up. We have wood on the interior. I put in some shelving here. I put in some fr some wooden frames to beef up the sides of this thing and the corners and about halfway through all of that is beefed up and we also have a nice little support beam here. So beefing this thing up is really key for sure. Um, you know if you're gonna get a greenhouse I would suggest building your own. I wouldn't suggest getting yourself a Harbor Freight greenhouse but if it's something you have to do you have to do it. Um, it's a real pain in the butt to put this thing together. I don't know what else you guys want to know. It's, it's six by eight. Um, it does the job, right? I get my plants in here in the fall, give them an extra boost to the season. Things like black Madeira that need a longer season. They can continue to ripen in the greenhouse. I can also wake my trees up in here at an earlier point by kicking on this heater in about March. March 1st is usually when I start to turn on the heater and really blast the thing at night, increasing the nighttime temperatures. Try to maintain the temperature in here at about 80. The trees in here will wake up, they'll leaf out, they'll put out their brava crop, and uh, things as early as July 1st I've had main crop. You know my Azores Dark, if you've seen the videos on that fig, I've had main crop come out of this because of my greenhouse, because of waking them up March 1st, March 15th, they've been able to fruit for me July 1st, when normally, without a head start, a lot of figs instead, if you just put them on the patio, they'll instead, the earliest variety will start August 1st. So I'm getting a whole nice month's head start. You know, we're able to store them in the greenhouse. We're able to keep them warm, keep them cool, Similar to how I have my other trees in here stored away. You know, these are underneath the sunroom and it does the same job, but none of these are able to get a head start. So that's, I think, the difference. You know, if you're gonna be doing this pretty seriously, you're gonna be growing figs seriously, uh, I think it's pretty important to be able to grow a lot more varieties, late season varieties, probably more tasty varieties, you need to have a greenhouse. So that is the video guys. Hopefully uh, you guys can check out this heater. If you buy the heater on their website and use the promo code in the description of this video, you will get a discount, but I will also get a cut of that. So it's a nice little thing to support me. So if you are considering getting the heater for yourself uh, this is the one that I certainly would get and it's also the one that uh, will help support me so 
I'll put a link to all that in the, in the bottom of the video. You know, all the links to the, the heater itself, the promo code. Uh, I'll even put a link to this greenhouse. You know, all that information is gonna be in the, in the uh, description. And if you guys have any comments about more about this, please let me know because I'm sure there's some things that you guys are still not just just not sure of. So again, this was Ross. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Take care.